What is going on guys, Vlad with SolusPLC.com here and today I'm bringing you a quick tutorial on XIC and XIO instructions. So one of the most fundamental yet sometimes misunderstood instructions in your toolkit uh, within the ladder logic environment and this is something that is common to a lot of PLCs and essentially in a typical program you would see somewhere between 90 to 95 percent of XICs and XIO used. So extremely important to understand how they work and it's not that complicated. So let's jump straight into the tutorial. So in terms of hardware, what I have is essentially a PLC tied to two separate buttons. The one on the left is green, the one on the right is orange, representing a start and a stop push button respectively. So you don't need to worry too much about the hardware, but essentially uh, the first one, the start button goes to my local one input data zero, and the second one, the stop button goes to local one input data one as indicated by the program right here, as well as the descriptions that I've put in already. Um, and looking at the logic, so in the first rung, you have this symbolic XIC instruction. So once again, this can be pulled up from here. And as you can see, it tells us examine on. So what does that mean is, is that the condition or the XIC becomes true whenever the input is pulled high. And in order to pull the input high, we need to hold down the button. So I don't want you to focus on the other rungs for now, but essentially in the first rung, you can see that as long as I maintain my finger on that start button, this condition is highlighted green, which means that it's evaluating to true. And so when I release that button, it immediately evaluates to false and you remove that highlight. And essentially what that is, is that uh, no matter what is after this instruction, as long as this XIC is pulled high, it will execute whatever is on the right side of my rung, right? So as long as I maintain my finger down on that push button, then whatever is on the right, uh, you don't need to pay too much attention to this uh, different instruction, which we're going to discuss in a separate video. But essentially, this XIC only allows current to go through uh, the metaphorical current whenever I have the finger down on this push button. Otherwise, there is nothing that's being executed after that uh, button. Similarly, on rung number one, you have this same exact logic, which is tied to the stop button. So as soon as I hold down the stop button, then this input uh, one that I data one is evalu evaluated to true and therefore executes whatever is left on the rung. And of course, these are independent. So if I hold down both of them, then both of those rungs will execute. So there's absolutely no tie in right now. Now, what is happening below on this rung number two? Now, I want to, to discuss, first of all, what is, uh, you know, what is a typical system required to run? So what you want a, your conditions to be is essentially whenever you hold, you press the start button, the system needs to start running. And then whenever you press the stop button, the system needs to stop. So which brings us to the second point or second instruction of this video, which is going to be the XIO. So in this case, let's examine the rung. So if I start going through um, my XIO, as you can see, it's highlighted. So it's inverse of the XIC. So XIO stands for examine if open. So whenever the button is not pressed or depressed or, uh, you know, any other terminology that you can use for a button, it is going to evaluate to true. So as soon as I start, as soon as I hit the start button, the current essentially goes through my start button, through the stop button, which is not pressed, and then it energizes this system is running, right? So whenever I hit the start and I hold it down, then you can see that current can very easily pass through this XIC, then it can pass through the XIO because the stop button is not pressed, and then it can energize this last uh, instruction. Now, if I hold down the stop button, you will see that this XIO is no longer true. So now, even if I try to press the start button with my other finger, you will see that nothing is happening because it's not enough for this rung to run, right? So remember, a rung requires all the instructions on the left side. Let me just make, make this a little bit clearer. If I zoom out all the instructions on the left side to evaluate true or allow the current to pass in order to uh, energize whatever's on the right side. So that's pretty much it for XICs and XIO. Let's uh, rec really quickly re-discuss uh, what kind of uh, essentially data types they are applied to. So if I go back into these local tags, if I go into this controller tag and look at my zero and one, the data bits which I'm using for the inputs, 
we will see that they are Boolean. So a Boolean, uh, really quickly, for those of you who are not aware, is essentially a, a zero or a one. So all I can have as a value here is a zero or a one. So if I try to put in something else, then it's going to tell me it is invalid because it's a string or uh, I guess an integer. So I have to put in a zero and one. And of course, this is an input, so it's only evaluating based on what the card is uh, coming in as. Now, the other kind of uh, point that I want you to drive home is that the XIC does not necessarily only need to tie into buttons. So your buttons are definitely the most obvious thing or your inputs, your sensors, whatever's coming into the PLC is the most obvious thing to use on XIC and XIO on. However, they can be used on internal tags. So as you can see, I have this system Boolean zero, which is a tag that I've invented. Um, it does not need to be an input or an output per se, but it can be used for a uh, an XIC and XIO instruction. And furthermore, uh, we will also see some of the more complex instructions which can leverage XICs and XIOs for certain conditions as long as they are of type Boolean. And uh, furthermore, if you want to drive this point home, you can even have tags. So if I go into this edit tags section and I create some kind of a an integer. So for example, an integer is composed out of a series of booleans, right? So it is a dent at the top level. But then if I expand this, you will see that it is composed out of booleans. So I can very easily use an XIC or XIO instruction on any one of these booleans within this dent uh, structure. So there's going to be 32 of them because a dent is essentially 32 bytes, uh, 32 bits. Sorry about that. So you can use it on any of them. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.